Today, I'm going to be showing you guys everything that you need to know when it comes to using SliceX in FL Studio. I'm going to be showing you guys some of the basic functions in SliceX, as well as some advanced tips that I've never really seen anyone cover on YouTube. So if you guys are trying to get better at sampling, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know when it comes to using SliceX to make better beats. Alright, so first off, some of the basic functions of Slice X. When you're making your chops, what I'd recommend doing first is highlighting the entire sample, and then clicking M on your keyboard, and then enter to make your marker, and then slowly dragging the highlighted portion across, click M again, enter. This to me is the most efficient way of making your chops using Slice X. Now if you want to delete a chop, just right click on the marker name and hit delete. If you want to delete a bunch at once, just highlight whatever area that you want to clear out. Hit control, shift, and delete, and there you go. If you want to undo any action, just click this button here. If you have a huge sample and you only want to work with a portion of it, what I'd recommend doing is highlighting the part that you want to use and hitting control, delete. Conversely, if you want to get rid of a portion that you don't want, just highlight it and hit delete. As well, there is an auto slicing function right here. If you take this button and right click it, you can choose which option you want to go with. So if you want to do dull auto slicing or if you want to move to medium, but as you can see, it's not that great sometimes. As well, what I'd recommend doing is clicking the auto dump button off. So what this does is let's say, for example, I make my own pattern here. And at the last second, I want to make a slight adjustment. Let's say I want to increase the amount of time in this slice. You'll see it'll completely erase what you've created and just put the original chops back in. So it's a good idea to turn this function off. If you want to change the pitch of the sample, there is this function up here. Unfortunately, it also stretches your sample out. If I pitch the sample down, it's also going to make the sample longer. In the advanced section of this video, I'm going to show you a way you can avoid that. As well, if you use a MIDI keyboard, depending on how hard you hit the key, the volume is going to change. So I'm going to hit it lightly here. And if I hit it hard. So to turn that off, go to the drop down menu here and click link velocity to volume. So now every time you hit a key, no matter how hard, it's going to stay at the same volume. All right, so now for some advanced tips. Let's say, for example, this is the chop arrangement that I came up with. So you guys can see, even though I made my chops at the different note changes and they're pretty much on time, unfortunately the timing of the sample is all over the place. Some of the notes don't play long enough, some are too short. So this is when time stretching is a very useful tool. So for example, I'm going to take the first slice here and what I wanted to do is play all the way to the end of the bar here. Now the way to do this is to take your cursor and put it to the exact part of where you want the sample to end. And if we look at the top here, we can see this is at 4.21 seconds. Now if we go into slice X and highlight the chop that we want to adjust and we hit alt T, this is going to bring up the time stretcher function. So first off, you want to make sure that the time stretch multiplier is set to 100% right here. And you want to make sure the pitch course is also at zero. And you guys can see the length of this note is 3,872 milliseconds, or in other words, 3.87 seconds. And how long we want the sample to be is 4.21 seconds. So all we have to do now is type in how long we want the sample to last. So here I'm going to type in 4210, which is 4.21 seconds converted into milliseconds. All you got to do is multiply by a thousand. And if I hit accept now, we can see this changed slightly. And now if I play it, it's the perfect length now. Now let's say for example, I want to take this huge long chop here and I wanted to cut it down to this length for whatever reason. What I do is drag this all the way to the front, take your cursor and put it at the end of the note. Again, based on however long you want it. We look at the top here, this says 1.57 seconds. Click Alt T. So the length of this before was 4.111 seconds. Let's convert this to 1.57 seconds, which would be 1,570 milliseconds. Hit accept. You guys can see just completely shrunk down. And now that entire portion, that entire chop is gonna play for this exact length that I put here. Again, this is how long it was before. And then after I made my adjustment, you guys can see it only lasts this long, which is exactly what I wanted. Let's say you have a drum loop that's at a different tempo from the beat that you're making and you make your chops and this is how it sounds. 
you guys can hear it's not very fluid. There are gaps in between the chops and it just doesn't sound as cohesive. One of the functions in Slice X that's really useful is to click the drop down menu up here and click loop half of regions. So let's hear how it sounds now. So it sounds a lot more cohesive. As long as the note is playing and it's held down, what it's doing is taking the second half of each of our slices and playing it over and over again. If you have clicks because your sample isn't chopped perfectly well on the zero crossing, what I'd recommend doing is highlighting the entire thing, going into the tools and click de-click in all regions. And also doing the exact same thing and clicking de-click out all regions. Conversely, what you can do is just click this magnet button here. What this does is it snaps to zero crossing. So whenever I move this around, you guys can see it sort of jumps around now. It doesn't completely smoothly go wherever I want it. So it's making sure that wherever I end up putting this marker, it's not gonna have a click or a pop. If you guys wanna change the pitch of the sample, what I'd recommend doing is highlighting whatever section that you want. Let's say I wanna take the entire thing, for example. And again, just hitting Alt-T. This is gonna take you back into the time stretcher. I'm using the pitch course up here. So what this is gonna do, unlike this function up here, is it's not going to stretch your sample. All it's gonna do is change the pitch and leave the overall time and the length of each of the samples alone. Another really useful function in Slice X is the articulator portion up here. So as you guys can see in the region settings, we can choose each and every single one of the slices that we've made. We can choose out, which dictates which channel this one particular slice will be routed to. For example, if I choose one, and if I were to change this to two. Cut lets you create a cut group. So for example, if I put this to one and I went to marker two and I put that to one as well. And if I play them on top of each other, what's gonna happen is they're gonna cut each other off. And if I didn't have them on, they just play over top each other. If you wanna quickly take all of your chops and send them to the same cut group, you can just go into regions and select set all cut groups to click one for example, and now every single one of the regions is gonna have the same cut group. The amp section here, we can control the panning of a particular slice, as well as the overall volume. There is a filter region over here, so you can control the cutoff frequency if we were to turn this on, and it's being sent to articulator one, which is exactly what's selected right now. So this controls the cutoff frequency. This one's the resonance. The speed knob here also lets you change the pitch of a sample as well. The start knobs here are pretty useless. They just let you change different parts of the sample that you wanna start in, not something that you'd ever use. Now this part of Slice X over here is really useful and something that you should learn how to use. So this is useful because we can completely reshape our samples however we want. So starting off, if I have my drums here and I come up with my own pattern for my drum loop, You guys can hear it doesn't sound very fluid because as long as the note is being held down, we're getting that static sound. So it just completely abruptly ends and it just doesn't feel fluid and natural. And that's where this function comes in and is super useful. So first off, what I recommend doing is clicking the drop down button here, hit open state file and select volume ADSR. So this opens up a simple ADSR function. And now what I'm gonna do is completely reshape this in order to match how a drum would actually look. So now I can take all of my slices and completely reshape the volume. That's exactly what we're doing here. We have the volume highlighted and we've chosen envelope. So now every single chop is gonna match this pattern of volume. It's gonna start off very loud and then slowly taper off. It just sounds a lot more natural now. Additionally, what you can do is the exact same thing with panning and frequency cutoff. I'm not sure exactly why you would want to if you want to get super experimental, but just to keep it very functional and focus in on things that are actually useful for beat making, we'll just leave it at that. Additionally, if you want to be a little bit more precise with the shape of your envelope, you can click the pencil button here and draw in whatever shape that you want. So if I go back onto my sample and I draw in something crazy like this, for example. So you guys can see it just matched this exact shape. It played loud and then it ducked down and then loud again and then it ducked down again. So this allows you to get a little bit crazy if you want. But again, if you wanna do something a little bit more natural, you can go in and draw whatever shape that you want. If you wanna get super experimental. And if you're gonna use these functions, another useful tool is if you click here again and you choose smooth up, 
This is gonna take whatever shape that you created and just help you adjust it around if you want. Also a sampling technique that I hear a lot of is when people like to play all of their chops in reverse. To do that, just highlight whatever portion that you want, hit Alt and then left, and everything's gonna be reversed now. Finally, if you have a chop in your sample that you don't like, let's say for instance, I don't like this snare and I wanna replace it. So all you need to do is pick whatever sample you wanna replace it with. Let's say I wanna take this snare. You drag it into slice X and you make sure the cursor is on top of the name. And now I've completely replaced this chop. And there you have it guys, those are some of the main functions when it comes to Slice X, the ones that are most important if you're a beat maker. I find using the time stretching correctly as well as using the ADSR really unlocks just how powerful Slice X can be. And making sure you understand how to use them is definitely going to help you improve with your sampling techniques and help you make better beats. If you found this video helpful, please do like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. If there's a function in here that I didn't cover that you really like, please let me know in the comments down below. Again, the download link to my free drum kit is available in the description box below. And I'll see you guys next Tuesday.